Okay, I see that the majority of the attendees have uh, now logged in, so let's start. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jussi Kajala, and co-founder of 3D Bear. We are the world's leading company in do-it-yourself virtual learning environments using augmented and virtual reality. I'm really happy that so many of you are here with me today in this webinar. The theme of today is how this metaverse bloom that has uh, emerged, how is it affecting learning? How is it affecting education? And how can educators, learners around the world utilize extended reality for better learning better learning outcomes to teach also the four C's, 21st century skills, creativity, communication, critical thinking that are so needed in the work life today. Um, the webinar is structured so that I will begin with giving you examples uh, and background of what is augmented reality um, what is the theme that we are tackling today? Then I'll show examples of how augmented reality and metaverse technologies can be used in education. Then you will have a task yourself uh, that I will ask you to do a hands-on exercise during this webinar. And for this purpose, if you want to take part in this activity, I kindly ask you to download the 3D Bear app, 3D Bear, all written together. You'll find it in App Store and Google Play, and you will need the app um, 20 minutes in, 30 minutes into the webinar, when we will do a task together with the app. So it might make sense to download the app now, if you have the opportunity. Okay. So without further ado, um, again, my name is Jussi Kajala. I'm the CEO of 3D Bear. 3D Bear is world's leading company providing do-it-yourself platform for augmented reality. Do-it-yourself means that our users can design their own scenes. Uh, they can build their own metaverse. And that is what 3D Bear is about. It's about creativity. It's like a pen of the metaverse where you can build your own content. A little bit of a personal background. So I have a PhD in physics. I went to University of Cambridge in the United Kingdom and in Finland, where I'm from. I was responsible for developing the whole XR industry in Finnish Funding Agency of Innovation for three years before I founded 3D Bear with um, my founding partners, some of which you see here on this slide. Uh, our India uh, operations are led by uh, Miss Divya Bat. And uh, um, if you have uh, interest in 3D burst activities in India, she is your point of contact. Divya is here on the right. If you wish to contact us, any of our emails are just first name at 3dbear.io and you can reach out to us. What is 3D Bear? Um, 3D Bear has been recognized by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to be top eight company in the world for XR in education. Uh, we are partners and integrated with all major platforms such as Apple, Google and Microsoft. And uh, our pedagogical approach of building your own metaverse has been recognized by several recognitions, including the common sense education topic for learning in ISTA in the US. Uh, for schools who wish to use our services, we provide a strategic partnership for developing augmented and virtual reality solutions. So whatever simulation, teaching needs your schools might have using these new age technologies, 3D Bear is there for you. Don't hesitate to get in touch. Okay, but let's start. So what is augmented reality? Um, 
So many of you must have heard about Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is an example of augmented reality. In it, you catch these virtual Pokemon that you don't see really in the real world, but when you look through a mobile phone screen, you see them and you're able to catch them by throwing a ball at them. So the Pokemon in this example are augmented. They are superimposed, they're added. So they are virtual element that you see as a part of the real world, although it's not actually there. It's augmented in the real world. So um, in Pokemon Go, uh, you, you know, catch augmented monsters, but the tools that we are offering, you can create any, you can build your own Pokemon or whatever your mind desires. And that's a huge differentiator. During COVID-19, um, remote and hybrid learning became drastically and crucially important for education. And during this period, the need for virtual learning environments was more dire than ever. And during this period, schools, uh, especially those who taught hands-on skills, they understood that uh, teaching these hands-on skills is impossible. How do you teach to cook if you don't get to kitchen without AR and VR technologies? And this is the big trend we are now exploring ourselves today, being able to simulate real world, emulate real world with these augmented and virtual reality technologies. If you're thinking, okay, now I get what AR is, augmented reality, it's like Pokemon Go, but what is VR? So let me just also answer that question. So virtual reality or VR is a different thing. We won't be speaking about it much today. We are focusing on AR, which is like Pokemon Go. But in virtual reality, you, for example, have goggles. And through the goggles, you see the virtual world. So you are completely in this digital virtual experience. And 3D Bear also creates VR learning experiences. Um, and those we won't be discussing that much today. So what is the first of all benefit of these augmented and virtual reality learning environments? I will show soon examples of such. So they enable remote teaching of hands-on and artistic skills. In Finland, I'm proud to say some students have been able to graduate using AR and VR because you couldn't get to school during COVID, where otherwise it wouldn't have been possible. They enrich the learning experience and they increase student motivation. So these are big themes of what we're discussing today. Um, so let's start with examples. I, I start close to kind of uh, um, job skills and work life. So let's take an example. Uh, this is uh, Keuda Vocational School um, in uh, Tuzula. Um, they have uh, incorporated the use of augmented reality to their interior design curriculum. So what do you see here? is an empty space. Usually they have five of these spaces in the campus where the students go and they design interior designs. Now, instead of you know doing it physically, where you go there and build a kitchen using what have you, you will design it virtually using completely augmented solution. And there's like a stand, there's clear instructions how you do it. Together with the teacher, we've built this learning environment, which corresponds to their actual physical learning environment. So they have the same models that they would have available physically and more. Actually, with this digital solution, you can access millions of more 3D models than you could when you have restricted with the local construction material. So one of these five design spaces in this school, uh, in this vocational school is empty and they do it completely digitally. The task is create an interior design, explore different materials, different colors, different compositions, and they are able to do it all virtually. And this actually saves time and money. So this, way, this is what the teacher says. 
when he doesn't use physical models, but builds everything virtually, they save thousands of euros and time every course. So this is actually a concrete benefit for the school in many ways. It doesn't replace actual construction. No, it adds onto it. They still have four different spaces where they build everything with their hands and with real material. But some exercises, like for example, choosing the different color combinations and uh, compositions, it's actually easier to do digitally. And this is what we've done here. So uh, let me just show a uh, video example of this. So uh, this is in a different context. In another school, they're practicing um, building retail displays using augmented reality. So here's a video example of that. In this exercise, the student utilizes augmented reality for practicing retail product placement. First, the teacher creates a classroom for the students on the 3D Bear website and adds students to the class one by one. After getting the task description, the student opens the 3D Bear app and signs in by using their own name and the class ID given by the teacher. The 3D models used in the task can be found in the app by searching for Urheilu esille pano. The task is to do retail product placement in a sports context, which the student can practice by making, for example, symmetrical and asymmetrical compositions. The task can easily be done at home on the student's own desk, but the school can also provide facilities for executing a bigger showroom entity. When the student is happy with their result, they can share it with the teacher in the form of a picture or a video. The teacher can then access the student's submissions in the designs section of the 3D Bear website. Okay, so that was an example. Now we've looked at that examples that are very close at kind of a job skills. In this and exercise. Life. And let's move to some other examples. I want to first give you a kind of a different examples. So you have see a wide variety of subjects that this can be used in. So let's look at the new next example. This is a uh, vir virtual arts exhibition. So this is arts. And uh, it, it's actually one of the most famous arts academies in Finland, the Pekka Halonen Academy and is the Tartukumsti school in Estonia that created this virtual arts exhibition using augmented reality and 3D pair together. So what they did is that students, they, they built their artworks, which could be either physical or virtual. If they were 3D models like virtual, they could be brought directly into this um, augmented arts exhibition. If they were physical, they were scanned with the handheld device you see here to uh, make them available in 3D band. And uh, part of the curriculum requirements for visual arts was to organize an exhibition of the work. So during COVID-19, again, this was not possible because you couldn't you know, invite people to an exhibition. So instead, they made the exhibition totally in augmented reality. So some of them did these wooden sculptures and then we scanned them and they were made into a virtual arts exhibition. So next, um, uh, and this was actually displayed on a, one of the most prominent exhibition places in Helsinki, the cable factory. And the next video is about that, showing how they build this exhibition and how you can still access it in, in, in 3D pair if you have downloaded it. What you see here is the world's first exhibition for anamorphic art executed in augmented reality. The exhibition was done by Keudas Pekka Halonen Academy as well as Tartu Kunsti School, 
and the collaboration between these two schools was facilitated by 3D Bear. The students processed shared themes through their art and created three-dimensional art pieces either with traditional methods or with the help of 3D modeling. Physical art pieces were then transferred to augmented reality by 3D scanning. The exhibition was opened in spring 2021, but it is still accessible for everyone in the 3D Bear app. With the help of the 3D Bear app, each exhibition visitor can curate their own exhibition experience in their backyard or the nearest public park. The artworks from the project can be found by searching for Keuda Tartu. As is typical for anamorphic art, there are hidden meanings in each of the artworks that can only be found when looking at the artwork from different perspectives. For example, this artwork's dance changes its shape when the sculpture is rotated, and observant viewers can find words hidden in this hurricane. In the end, the visitor can save their exhibition experience as a picture or a video and delight others with it by sharing it as an AR story in the 3D Bear app. Uh, so now we've looked um, two use cases, uh, one in interior design and retail placement, one in artworks. So let's look at more K through 12 um, use case next. So this is um, a use case where students made a project uh, regarding local urban design. So this phenomenon-based learning is a big topic uh, in the world and project-based learning. And augmented reality is the perfect tool for um, doing projects that utilize PBL uh, in many ways. So this is an example. Um, what happened here is that um, in Espo, which is the second biggest city in Finland, uh, they built a metro line, an underground. And students were participated in the urban design of it. So um, there were metro stations uh, being built locally and students uh, thought in groups with the design thinking methodology, how would I like to be our local metro station like? And they asked questions in groups like what makes a functional metro station, how would children improve it, and so on. They thought about what makes great metro station design, how would I like to have it. And then when they kind of uh, um, ideated their solutions, um, after that they went to the metro stations. And at the metro stations, they checked, is this what I wanted? We wanted to, on, on the metro station, we wanted to have a clock visible so that we could see the time when I go to metro. Well, here I don't see a clock. So let me just put using 3D pair app a clock there. So this would actually improve the metro station for me. And they made a lot of different suggestions for the local metro stations. So the children were participated in the local urban design using our tool. Um, so one of the points was that they wanted to have more green, more plants in the area to make it more comfortable. And they came up with all of these ideas, uh, how they'd like to improve the metro station design. And this uh, list was given to the decision makers, the city urban planning committee, the mayor. We actually organized again an exhibition in a museum showcasing the children's work. And what's great, some of that has been realized. So the students have affected their local metro station design. And think about how much democratic decision-making student voice this brings up. It's a really empowering experience for these school children to understand that my voice matters. I can affect my local environment. And I'm very proud of this project we did. So that's another example in K through 12 that how you can use 3D Bear for teaching. There are many more, and soon I will let you do one yourself. So there's 
over 500 different uh, subject areas where you can use the app for in different grades and different education levels. I've just given three examples here because our time today is limited. Um, but what is important is that our solution enables teachers to design their own activities. And that makes it, uh, like I said, the pen of the metaverse. So yes, there's a lot of, lot of ready-made lessons, curriculum content, uh, very easy to use, but you can use it to build anything. You can make your own collections, your own lessons. Um, it's unlimited what you can do in the app. And this is what I want to leave you with regarding this introduction session. When you do it, when you build your own lesson or activity using 3D Pair, it's really important to plan it right. So when teachers today, they plan lessons, they might plan slides, PowerPoint slides. So planning an augmented or virtual reality exercise for students requires a little bit of a different process of planning the lesson than using PowerPoint does. And this is what we can teach to anybody in our 3D Bear academies. It involves these stages, but today the time is short to go uh, too deep on it. But if you're interested, if you wanna become an ambassador teacher using augmented and virtual reality, we encourage you to sign up for 3D Bear Academy to uh, really harness these tools that you've seen the power of. So let's get back to the kind of benefits of how you use uh, XR in education. You saw three examples. So what XR enables is learning hands-on or artistic skills remotely. Remember the arts exhibition. Um, students can do the tasks at their own pace uh, uh, and uh, they can do it together. So it's individual and scalable. You don't need uh, travel, you don't need equipment to do the virtual exercises, it saves time and money. Using AR and VR is already a competition advantage on the job market. Some of the teachers, well, almost all of our ambassador teachers have got promoted in their work when they've brought these technologies into their schools. Also students, when they graduate, they're hot in the job market when they know how to use this new technology. Other benefits include experimentation. So you can practice like dangerous or um, uh, expensive mistakes kind of uh, in a safe environment. And also let's say chemistry, um, you can fast forward a chemical reaction uh, in a virtual simulation. Whereas like in a lab, if you did, did re reagents, it would take like two days to react and then you see the results. Here you can speed up the time. So these are benefits of using XR and AR specifically, remember it was augmented reality and virtual reality. So considering augmented reality, uh, the impact assessments that have been made, the research of our work show that three concrete benefits of augmented reality pedagogically exist. One, you can interact with the environment. So this is not possible in virtual reality, for example. What this means is students can be part of the scenes that they create themselves. Um, for example, making plays uh, with people acting, they can be like Steven Spielberg's directing movies using augmented reality. Second, kinesthetic and visual learners flourish. So this is obviously hands-on doing. Some people learn well by reading or in a social interaction, but for those who don't, this is really great tool by learn by building. And uh, we found that in, in, in especially um, special needs students learn better because they're able to concentrate better without social pressure using AR and VR. Finally, uh, there's a pedagogical theory called Bloom's taxonomy, which says that creation is the highest form of learning. So you saw an example where you created a retail product placement display. When you build it yourself, you actually need to think about a lot of different topics. 
what makes a good composition, what makes it appealing for a customer, what is the order of products I put in, and so on. This you don't learn easily by just you know, reading from a book. At least the learning experience is very different. Well, let's take an example of history. If you compose a historical scene, um, it's a very different learning experience that you build it yourself and then explain to others what's in the scene, then you would be reading about that scene from a book or hearing about it from a teacher. So this increases the learning experience, hence the memory impact, hence learning results. So these are the concrete kind of impact uh, benefits of using augmented reality in education. Okay, so um, we are 30 minutes in into webinar, and now it's your time to shine. Um, the rest um, five minutes, I'll, I will give you an exercise and the rest of the webinar, the last five minutes, I'll look at the Q&A and answer and I have a dialogue with you uh, regarding the questions you might have. But now I ask you to do an, your maybe first augmented reality scene. So I would kindly ask you to, at least now, if you haven't done it already, download the 3D Bear app. It's 3D Bear written together from App Store or Google Play. Uh, and your task is tell a story. It can be any story you want. Story usually has a character, a setting, and then an action. So who, what, when, where are the kind of questions that you would like to answer telling a story. If you have a favorite story that is in your mind, children's fable maybe, you can uh, depict it in augmented reality by making it into an ARC. So this webinar is too short to give you a comprehensive teaching of how to use our app, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm uh, trusting on you that you'll figure it out. You can tell a story using our app. And I ask you, take a video of your work and narrate it. Speak aloud the story. And when you're done with it, publish it as an AR story with hashtag 3D Bear webinar, so we can all see what stories we are creating today. Bill's please next five minutes is dedicated to this activity. I will be quiet. I will be reading the Q&A. And in five minutes, I'll look at the stories that have been published and I will get back the questions and answers you might have had. Good luck creating your first augmented reality experience. We'll be back in five.
um, keep doing for a minute or two. I will answer the uh, Q&A, which is um, in written form, and you can see it in the Q&A section. Okay, uh, thank you for um, thank you for um, your enthusiastic questions. I, I have answered some of them in text, and I hope you enjoyed telling a story using the app. Um, I will answer a couple of questions live. So. Um, uh, there's a couple of questions about uh, what certificates can you obtain with AR VR? How do you start learning to use AR and VR in education? Um, how, well, what is the 3D per academy? How to get into the future uh, job? So that's a, actually a question together that I will answer um, soon. Um, but a couple of two questions I answered before that. So uh, in, uh, one attendee has interest in drones and robotics. And uh, the question is, can we make an AR of robot that we will make in the future prototype? And I think that's a great question because augmented reality is good for prototyping. Uh, so you can, for example, if you design a 3D part with any tool that you have at your disposal, Tinkercad, Google, uh, SketchUp, Autodesk, any CAD program, uh, Blender if you're a professional, so if you design a 3D model, you can just upload it into a sketch fab. That's an online 3D model repository. And if it's there, it's directly accessible with 3D Bear. So you can search the name of the model in 3D Bear app and you'll find your own model in the app. So then when you have it, you can, uh, if you're building, for example, a robot, you can go to your robot, take your phone and put your part to the robot that you're building to see if it fits, if it's the right color, to see it in the real environment. So um, augmented reality is actually great for prototyping in that way. A great, great question. Um, for example, another example is if you're designing a dress and want to kind of see if the buttons fit, you can make the buttons and put them into 3D per app and then look on the top of the dress whether these buttons are the kind of that you want and then you can 3D print them. So you can use AR in prototyping in kind of an adult, uh, high, high kind of a technical capability, not, not something that you start with, um, but this is what you can do uh, when, when you're experienced enough. Um, one question is like about corporates and their learning needs. Um, in our experience, uh, corporations benefit more from virtual reality and their uh, scenario-based learning programs are really um, useful. So this is for employee training, uh, employee induction, where you can practice um, skills required in job in a virtual simulation. And we are partners with Wanda VR, um, and we create this kind of a simulations for corporations. So if you want to use it, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me and Divya. All right, and then to finish off uh, the answer to the last question. So uh, you asked um, whether 
uh, ho ho if you want to learn more than uh, here, you can sign up for 3D Pair Academy and become an ambassador using augmented reality in classroom or work if that's your cup of tea. So this is where you go. There's the QR code. And the easiest thing to do next is this short four session academy. It's very inexpensive. Um, and with these four sessions our professional um, professionals, Indian teachers and 3D Bear ambassadors and our staff will guide you through more specifically how you use augmented reality in whatever context you ever wish. So please sign up for this if you want to know more, get more involved, become a 3D Bear ambassador. And with that, I finish and thank you for the session. It, it has been a pleasure um, presenting augmented reality with you today. And I hope that many of you will be contacting us, Divi and me, uh, for further discussions and signing up for our 3D Bear Academy. Thank you all for this beautiful evening together and this webinar.